to show you what school music really looks like in the school that I work in. So, there you go, that's my music room. Let me talk you through some of the stuff. So, first off, percussion trolley. I'm sure every, every music room in the land, or at least every school in the land, has one of these. Um, boom whackers on the top, absolutely huge hit for the children, and um, they're fun to use, and they are pitched. And then we've got the, all the traditional stuff, claves, shakers, tambourines, um, and kids really enjoy getting their hands on this. Um, let me just show you a sign I've got, because traditionally in a classroom you look on the walls for work. Well, not so in the music room, so if you're going to look for our music class displays, you won't find them there. You need to find our work on our school music blog. And I've helpfully scribbled the address on the mirror for the kids to see. Okay, oh, these are my volume levels. I would love to tell you, I'd love to be able to say that yes, the children always work at the level the arrow is pointing at. But I'd be telling a fib. Okay, so I've got an interactive whiteboard and Wi-Fi. Um, I've got about half a dozen keyboards. And again, it's something the children actually really enjoy using. Um, I will sometimes scribble notes on so that um, the kids can um, sort of improvise, make up their own ostinatos to accompany songs we're doing. Here's lots of papery stuff. I use lots of felt tips, scissors, glue for when we're making graphic scores um, and kids do their own composing. I use lots of picture books as well to inspire us for our music making. And, and here, the kazoos. Of course, I have milk and white, so one can use them. Lots of whiteboards and pens so we can make our own stick notation. Oh, and pegs, and we use these pegs to help us remember when we're playing the recorder. And we put the peg on our left arm if we're struggling to remember which hand to have on top. And anyone who likes Kadai, as on Dal Crozy, we use lots and lots of ribbons for movement and active listening. And these work really, really well. And I found them very cheaply on Amazon for eight quid for about 12. So, oh, over here we've got the puppets. Hickety tickety, hickety tickety bumblebee, can you sing your name for me? Flies around the classroom, he keeps a steady pulse, and he has been in the hands of every child in this school. And Funky Monkey, who demonstrates beautiful singing technique, has lovely posture. I do use, I like to use puppets with my early years key stage one. I always have map books around, globes, atlases, so the children can look up different songs that we're singing in places. I've got that wonderful big speaker that I plug my iPhone in to have music playing as kids come in. Um, actually, year two looking at Bobby Shafter, but my, my board. And these ladders and staircases I find really helpful for children to get the concept of, of make marking on pitch and eventually they do move on to the, to the stairs, but I find them really helpful. So my keyboards again. And a lovely glockenspiel, it's got beautiful tone, glockenspiel and two xylophones. And Martin Fortley said recently, I think in his A to Z of music, that we didn't have enough xylophones in school, and he's absolutely right. They are incredibly expensive, so I can only afford three, but no matter. Uh, somebody gave us a drum kit, and I've actually taken it apart. We use the drums for percussion work, um, and for samba, it's fantastic. And this I absolutely love. comes in handy for all sorts of things, not least when you want to get children's attention and to get them to be quiet. And I've got a few djembes, and again, this is something I would love to invest in. I'd love a class set of djembes, and so that is on my wish list. And I've got a wall down the whole of one, sorry, a mirror down the side of one of the walls so that the children can see their posture, um, and it makes me a bit lighter as well. So, that's my music room. Will you show me yours?